right, and after about an hour and a half of running back and forth, boosting my stats and mining ore and smithing bars that I don't have the level for, we finally have our Elder Rune Pickaxe plus five, which is absolutely amazing. So we'll just go and add this to the tool belt. And I think, yep, we should get our Bane one back and we can just go and elk this one for a little bit of cash, 128K. That's really nice. And guys, welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore IMF from Scratch series. Thank you all for joining me today, guys. Now, as you've just seen, we've upgraded our Bane Pickaxe into the Elder Rune plus five, which is the best pickaxe in the game. It's tied in first place with the pickaxe of Earth and Song as the best in the game. The only difference between the two is the Elder Rune plus five cannot be augmented, which I'm not really all that worried about to be honest, and I mean it's going to be a long time before we can get the pickaxe of Earth and Song anyway, so for now, that's a really good upgrade, let's jump into the episode. Okay guys, coming in on the first and what I think will be the only mining level of the episode, it's level 91 mining, um, I don't think this really unlocks us anything apart from the starved ancient effigy. Okay guys, if you see here, I have just over 1200 bainite ore ready to go, and we also got three metamorphic geodes from this little mining grind. Now last episode, not only did we mine more ores, but we didn't get any of these metamorphic geodes, but we got three this time. So you're just watching me open them here. The first one gave us a first age coin, which I was really, really happy about, because if you didn't know, you can elk these for 1 million GP. And look, as an Iron Man, as someone who's in need of uh, GP constantly. I was really happy with this drop. Um, the second and the third geodes gave us some concentrated alloy bars, which I believe somehow tie into the masterwork smithing, so that's not really useful to us at this point. Okay, the first smithing level coming in, it's going to be level 89, obviously. Um, I'm starting to think I might have miscalculated how much ore I need. I think I'm going to end up being maybe a couple of hundred ore short. Okay, so this is the last Bane burial plate body that I have. Um, as I said, I was slightly off with my calculations like that's been just a theme <laughs> this episode and, and in the last episode I, I tend to be off in my calculations quite a bit but look we are only 100k off so that's going to be pretty easy for us to get I'm probably just going to do that in the background but I think we're going to change it up because as I've been saying we've been doing a lot of smithing and a lot of mining so let's go do something else but I will I will show you when we get Nani smithing because obviously you know we've got the whole the whole tier 80 weapon C to to talk about as well but for now, I, I don't know what we're going to go and do. We're going to do something, though. Well, I'm sure as all of you know, it is a new month and everyone's out there doing their monthlies, including me. I decided to go and do my troll invasion because I knew that if we put the XP into Herblore, we would actually be able to pick up a cheeky Herblore level. And this is actually somewhat of a milestone Herblore level. It's going to be level 81, and this is going to allow me to make Sarabrews without ever having to boost again. So, I mean, I know Sarabrews aren't exactly the hardest thing for me to get anymore, but the fact that now I don't have to boost for them is just going to make everything, including boss prep just that much easier. Of course we continued on to do our other monthlies and what video would be complete without us getting just some absolute trash out of the oyster, our old friend the large prismatic star making a return as well. I should probably preface this clip by saying that no I haven't forgotten about the prayer grind, I still am saving up cleansing crystals and GP in my bank, it's just I'm not actively training it at the moment, but we did manage to pull the prayer level thanks to me completing my god statues for a few months in a row and it finally has come to fruition and we were able to get 83 prayer. Unfortunately we didn't get a combat level from it, but hey it's pushing is ever closer to level 92. Seriously guys, I've been back here for maybe five minutes. I'm just getting some some more ore to finish off 90 smithing and we've already got another metamorphic geode. We're getting these things so often, it's crazy. Actually, let's open it right now. Let's see what we get. Who cares? We get some onyx dust. That's interesting. I, yeah, um, okay. All right, guys, look, honestly, I'm pretty surprised with how long it took us to actually get around to getting 90 smithing. Um, it only took us maybe like one and a half episodes I think which really as I said I'm pretty happy with it but there it is that's level 90 smithing all done um, unfortunately we can't go straight away to collect our armor seed because uh, we still need 2000 harmonic dust in order to sing it into a weapon so we're gonna go and do that first uh, but let's see what else do we unlock here we can make a dragon fire shield I guess if we ever get a, uh, a visage uh, we can now smith elder rune without having to boost which is just great um, as well as the tetsu armor uh, and we have unlocked ports as we all know so that's Something to uh, something to keep note of as well. So actually, it turns out I have 2,000 harmonic dust in my bank, which is fucking cool. I I thought I had zero, but hell yeah. Okay, so I think all we have to do is talk to Lady Ethel here. Um, I haven't done this for oh, okay, cool, just like that. I was about to say I haven't done this for ages, so I'm not really sure how to do it. But yep, just like that, she just hands it straight to you. Um, so as we've been talking about, it's obviously going to allow me to select the tier 80 weapon in any style of my choosing. 
Um, and I think after a, a lot of thought, I am going to go with the staff. Um, a lot of you suggested I go with the staff as well. So thanks, thanks to everyone who um, who left their opinion in the comments of that of that episode. I think it was a couple of episodes ago by now. But we are going to go with the Atrian Crystal Staff. So let's just sing it and just like that, it's all done. And we have a tier 80 magic staff, which is fucking awesome. That means we have tier 80 mage and melee at the moment. Almost, we will have tier 90 melee as well once we get uh, 90 attack. Because, you know, we have 90 smithing now. But yeah, fuck yeah, that's, so, that's fucking awesome. Now I am also going to do some research into some of the perks that I can potentially put on this thing. Uh, with my invention level, I'm not sure whether it's worth augmenting at the moment or not. So if it is, I'll let you know and I'll get back to you on that. No, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm absolutely stoked with this. I, I can't wait to put this to good use, man. Like, we're going to be able to go to Zami with this. We're going to be able to pick up our subjugation, you know, which is going to be um, just a, an absolute step above the lunar armor we have at the moment. And that's going to probably make me more comfortable uh, to go to Vindicta to pick up our Lance. And then, you know, we can go to QBD to get tier 80 ranged and you know oh, it, it this opens so many doors and we're actually also just going to pick up a quick invention level as well uh just as i'm discovering all of these components and stuff that have been building up over time that's going to be level 55 i'm not sure if this unlocks anything oh no we unlock faceted and clockwork components i i think both of those are actually a crucial uh, ingredient in a couple of pretty useful perks, I think. Okay, so I've been reading the wiki and I've been looking on Reddit and just asking around a bit, and the general consensus is that the precise perks and the equilibrium perks are the ones to go for. Um, you can also go for invigorating and energizing, but most people just go for equilibrium and precise. That's what people are saying. Look, I don't know if I even have the required level to access those perks, um, but apparently these are the ones to go for, so that's what we are going to go and try and do, but I guess we're going to go and make the Augmenter first. I'm, I think I might actually not have enough energy for this. Yeah, I need to get some more, uh, some more energy. All right, so we should have the, uh, everything we need for this Augmenter, so yeah, we do. Let's just go and manufacture this and slap it on our newly acquired Attuned Crystal Staff. Just like this. Uh, this cannot be undone without a augmentation dissolver. Do you wish to continue? There we go. So augmented attuned crystal staff. That looks really cool. Let's just have a let's just get a nice quick look at this. I think it looks really cool. Honestly, I do. I think it I think it looks pretty damn pretty damn cool. Now, as for whether I should be augmenting my armor, like my top and my legs, obviously once I get better armor, uh, as for whether I should be augmenting that, I'm not sure. I'm kind of also asking you guys for a little bit uh, of advice on that because not only have I not been out of the invention game for like a year and a half, but now now that I'm back in it, I'm on a I'm on an Iron Man, which is a totally different ball game uh, as well. So I'm a little bit sort of clueless, like a deer in the headlights uh, at the moment with this whole iron iron invention thing. So could could definitely use some some tips in the comments, guys. <laughs> All right. As for the perks I managed to put on it, I'm pretty happy with them. I managed to get P2E1, which I know isn't like great at all, um, but with my invention level only being level 55, I'm gonna take that, absolutely. And I've also got scavenging two on there, so hopefully it's, uh, hopefully scavenging can get us some, uh, some interesting components or materials that we couldn't otherwise get. But yeah, I don't know what I wanna do now, man. I kinda wanna go and test out this stuff, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I thought I would come and get a potential, so I thought I would come and renew my deaths assignment. It's been sitting pretty dormant, uh, as you can see here. It's still Six Barrows Brothers from a couple episodes ago. I just haven't been asked to go and do it. But since we, uh, since you know, circumstances are different now, we've got a new magic weapon to test out. I'm thinking maybe we can get lucky and get a uh, a high Aiken task or a Kiln task. Oh, on the last reroll, we managed to get it. So we have one. Ha Aken to go and kill, or Ha Aken, however you want me to pronounce it. I don't know, bro. But yep, yeah, I'm feeling pretty damn motivated. Let's go and get this magic kiln cape. Fucking complete this, uh, complete this setup upgrade. If you, if you could call it that, I, I, I don't know. Well, that honestly went a lot better than I ever could have hoped. I was a little bit worried that since we haven't actually done the kiln for a fair bit now, it's probably been upwards of five or something episodes since we got our Onyx uh, a, a ways back. So I, I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to complete it on my first run through, but... I did it, no problems, we even beat our personal best by like 7 minutes or something, so. And yeah, now I am pretty confident to come back and get the other two styles of capes. I will admit, I was kind of putting it off a little bit, just because, you know, it, it is it is a little bit of a commitment to come and do like a kill and run, uh, at least for me, because I've got to gather supplies and whatnot, so it does take a bit of time. But nevertheless, we got our cape, and holy shit, let me tell you guys, 
Oh, dude, this, these capes just look so fucking good. I'm sorry, they just look amazing, and they it feels awesome to to accomplish this on a hardcore as well. I never thought, honestly, seriously, when I started this account, I I honestly wouldn't have ever thought I would get to where I can complete the kiln. I'm not a PVMer. I'm real. I'm really not. So. To me, to accomplish something like this on a hardcore, I'm pretty damn proud of myself. But but yeah, this means this means next episode is like God Wars One, like all the fucking way, bro. Okay, but yeah, time to finish off the episode with some clue scrolls, and I thought I would actually run you through how I do them this time because I did get a couple of comments asking um, how I at least seem to complete clue scrolls somewhat efficiently. Which, by the way, I don't. I'm really inefficient with clue scrolls. There are people out there that are just way way better at it. But I thought I would run you through how I do it at least. So let's go and do that. Okay, so I know I usually do 10 hard clue scrolls to finish off an episode, but I only had 5 in my bank, so to make up for only doing 5, I thought we would try and do a master clue as well, and maybe get a master clue scroll casket. And since some of you were asking how I do my clue scrolls, I thought I would take you through the 5th hard clue scroll that I have here, and maybe even the master clue scroll as well. So the first thing I would suggest you do is going and downloading Alt 1 Toolkit. It's completely free, and it's completely within the rules to use within the game, so you don't have to worry about getting banned or anything like that. I'll leave a link to the download in the website, but once you've downloaded it, installed it and whatnot, uh, you'll see a little pop-up on the top right hand corner of your screen. And basically, if you just click where it says Alt-1 Toolkit right here, um, it just brings up a whole uh, list of little programs that just help you and make playing the game just a little bit easier. So obviously, since we're doing Clue Scrolls, I'm going to open the Clue Solver, and I have this running uh, all the time when I'm doing Clues. Just keep it running in the background, just like you see here. So what we're going to go and do is we'll open our fifth hard Clue Scroll, uh, open her up, and the clue will pop up and it automatically, you see there, it automatically solves the clue. Uh, so just as long as you have this program up and running in the background, as soon as you click up a clue scroll, it will solve it like you see here. So let's go to this one, dig it up and we'll move on to the next step. Now as for gear and stuff that I bring when I'm solving clue scrolls, it's just basically any item that teleports me anywhere in the game. I just try and fill my inventory with as many teleport items as I, as I own. And yeah, this just helps me get to where I need to go for the clue scrolls uh, as quickly as possible. Obviously, if I was a main account or like a higher level account, I would have better teleporting options and whatnot. So it's, all, it's just about being as efficient as you possibly can. Anyway, so here we are at the second step. We're gonna search the crate, get the clue scroll and bring it up on our screen again. And the program will automatically tell us where we need to go, which is the wizard's tower. And as you can see here, it actually gives you a couple of options as to how you can get here. You can either use the fairy rings with the code DIS, or you can uh, teleport with the wicked hood, or even what seems to be, I think it's a jade necklace, I think. So yeah, on top of telling you where you need to go, it actually also gives you a couple of options to teleport there as well. Now I know for a fact that this step is a slider puzzle step, and another great aspect of this program is no matter what puzzle you get, um, I know in hard clue scrolls I believe you can only get slider puzzles, but for example in elite clue scrolls you can get the, the Celtic knots uh, and it solves them as well. You can get different puzzles in master clue scrolls as well like lock boxes and there's a couple of other ones. It solves them as well so if you are doing clue scrolls and you don't have this program installed, uh, seriously just go like click off the video right now and go and install it because um, it'll it'll just save you so much time and it just it just makes things so much easier. Okay, perfect. So this one is a uh, an emote clue. So I wanted to talk about this as well because it helps you with these as well. So you can see here, it's already got the items listed that you'll need um, as well as the emote just in case you forget. And I would highly suggest you guys to build your stash units. Um, I can't really help you any other way than just saying like with emote clues, the only way to be efficient is just to just to make sure you have your stashes built. That's really the only thing. But yeah, I'm not actually going to take you through the rest of this clue scroll because I mean, as far as explaining how this program that helps me with clue scrolls works. I'm pretty sure I've covered like all the basics. I'm not going to go through like fully in depth with it because we could, we'll be here for half an hour. All right, guys, well, we have our five caskets here. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a master casket because even though I had three clue scrolls, um, two of them were skill requirements that I just didn't have. And the other one was a, uh, an emote clue with items that I, there's just no way I was going to be able to get them. So so like usual, we're going to finish off on some clue scrolls. So before I ramble for too long, let's just jump into them. First one is going to get us... um what? Okay, so 600,000 gold, probably because of the puzzle skipping tickets, also a court summons. Jump into the next one, giving us nothing. Um, see, very strange clue scroll uh, value. I mean, I, I can't see why this would be worth 400,000 gold. A couple of runes, uh, a couple of alchemals, like... Very interesting. Okay, number three, 
uh, gives us nothing, but we have a reroll here. Uh, but do we want to reroll this? It's quite nice. That's quite nice money. I might actually hold on to this one. I don't know why. There was just some nice alcohols in this one. Holy crap. Three armadillo page threes. We're definitely not rerolling that. Absolutely not. All right. The last casket gets us 100k. So, of course, we will reroll this one and get something spicy indeed a red dragon mask so a definitely a fortunate component and we're going to start our stack of master clue scrolls off again now i know what you're thinking i know last episode i said i was going to disassemble all my fortunate components uh and i'm still going to do that i didn't forget about that we are still going to do that just before i finish up now this is what the clue tab is looking like at the moment now i'm not going to disassemble every single one of my fortunate components i do i do want to keep a couple of them because i think uh, either there are items in here that I just want to keep just because I like the item or because I do need them for a, a clue scroll at some point. Like here, for example, we have 11 magic compos, so we can take 10 out pretty comfortably uh, to disassemble. We'll take 5. I don't know if I want to leave, like, a, a placeholder or anything. I probably shouldn't, but um, we do have to... We just got to be careful with what we want to disassemble. Like here, for example, we have a bob shirt, and I'm not sure if there is a clue step that requires a bob shirt. I know there is one in old school, but I'm not sure about RS3, so I'm going to hold on to this one. But like all this stuff here, all this adamant equipment, this can all go. Uh, it's gonna, it's definitely going to hurt to uh, to get rid of all this stuff because, you know, it's been building up for a while, but, you know, it's it's got to go. We do need the bank space. Okay, I think this is all the stuff I can disassemble for the moment. Let's see how many uh, fortunate components we end up with. Okay, and that is the last thing disassembled. I wonder, I really don't know, maybe about mid-30s, that's what I'm sort of thinking. Okay, look, 42 fortunate components. We're only eight off our first um, alchemical onyx, I guess you could say. I mean, really, we're not that close at all. We're actually quite far off. We still need 107 invention, but I mean, fortunate component-wise, we're almost there. Well, anyway, guys, that's going to do it for episode 48 of the Hardcore Iron Man from Scratch series. I really hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Now, if you like what I do here and you want to see more, I would highly suggest hitting that subscribe button. I upload in a variety of different games, one of which I am almost sure you will find interesting. And again, if you want to support, a brilliant way to do that is actually just leaving a like or a dislike uh, on this video. It really does help me and, you know, it gets my channel up there in the algorithm with, with the interaction between you guys and the videos. And if you want to support me further, I've got links down below to my Twitch and my Patreon where you can get early access to many upcoming videos. But guys, with all that out of the way, my name is Seno. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you in the next one. See you guys.